Takedown Wrestling, i.e. Russell.com. I'm Tony Hager, joined by a special guest, Olympian Dan Dennis. How are you doing uh, this afternoon? Looks like you're uh, enjoying a nice little patio. Yeah, yeah. It's a beautiful Colorado day right now. Colorado. Just five days ago, you were in Iowa City, and have you... Did you just get to Colorado, or did you go out there right after you, you won? No, actually, uh, yesterday morning, um, had a meeting, sat down with Tom um, to kind of discuss schedule and all that and just do some organizing after the trials. And then uh, middle of the day, just, just kind of thinking about what to do for this, maybe getting out of town and going on a climb with, uh, with a couple of friends. So I uh, called Tom up mid-afternoon yesterday and – cleared and made sure it was all right that I ran out of town for a couple of days and ended up driving all last night. Got in, uh, got in this morning at six, uh, six something in the morning here. So it's a good what, time. How much has your life changed since, since Sunday? I got to imagine people have been calling you and doing all kinds of stuff that you didn't have a week prior. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot, uh, a lot more distractions going on and, uh, it's, it's hard to it's hard to wrap my head around and I and I'm I'm starting to um you know acknowledge it for what what it is and uh starting to you know I just got to start getting focused on uh on the three competitions I have before the Olympics in Rio and then uh and then you know getting ready to wrestle in Rio and you know represent myself well um but yeah a lot's going on and a lot a lot uh, there's a a whole lot of distractions and a whole lot of noise from outside and I think I had more text messages on my phone than I knew I had friends in my uh than I had contacts so it was uh it was kind of it was a lot to take in um but I'm starting to uh you know get for what it's worth and not uh not blow it out of proportion um acknowledge it for what it is and uh and start moving on to the next uh next task at hand so you you're in Colorado to go on a climb and kind of clear your head and you know looking back on the weekend you weren't living this lifestyle where you know, there's media everywhere and kind of people forgot about Dan Dennis and what he was doing what was it like being in that environment once again back in Carver Hockey Arena where people that know you you know they know your history um yeah it's great and uh the most important thing to me and the, and the people that I surround myself with and, and around, um, I don't, I don't like going out, uh, um, you know, and, um, putting on a big show around town. Um, I never wear Iowa gear in Iowa city and I never wear, uh, you know, I don't like the, uh, the eyes and the spotlight in, uh, in a town where, where maybe you do, uh, where people will know you if you, you know, if you let them and, um, I try to uh, I try to keep it low key, and uh, being being back there is great. But I don't even know if I answered your question. What was your question again? I kind of got... <laughs> well, it, you I asked you if you enjoyed being back in Iowa City with the bright lights. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I do enjoy it, but I, I try not to uh, I try not to to uh, over hype it up. Um, to me, it's today in today's world you can. Um, it's good being back, but in today's world, you can go on social media and and get as much attention as you want. And and to me, it, it's a uh, it's it's fake. It's fake attention. So I, I really like the close knit um, relationships and the close knit, tight, very intimate relationships that I have with uh, with my close friends. And I, I don't I don't like the stars and you know the lights and and flashes and all that uh, all that pageantry around it in Iowa City sometimes. So I try to kind of keep myself away from that a little bit. Is that why you went out west, when, just to get away from it all? Did you want to get as far away as you possibly could? Yeah, I, I, I needed a break. Um, I, where I was at, um, yeah, I, I wasn't bitter. Um, I just, I wasn't motivated. I wasn't in the right mindset to, uh, to stick around and be beneficial to, to myself and progressing as a person or – or really helping out the team, and uh, you know, leaving Iowa City, the some of the hardest things to leave were um, were my relationships that I had with guys on the team, with uh, with coaches, with friends, um, with old teammates, with just you know people that I met, uh, 
just leave it, leaving Iowa City, that was one of the harder things for me. But I just wasn't in the right mindset. I wasn't in the, um, you know, the 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 um, mindset to develop, and uh, not just in wrestling, just develop and grow um, as a person. And, and I, w- I wasn't there, and I wasn't motivated to do that. So just leaving and not not beating a dead horse and dragging out, um, you know, holding on to something and, you know, really, uh, exhausting the sport of wrestling to where I could have, I could have taken a coaching job in, in college. And I had a couple of offers, but I just wasn't motivated to do that, um, and be a benefit towards anyone I would have been working with. So going to the high school is it, 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 and I was motivated to do that. It was, it was good being around those, um, that age group and, and those kids and, and then the relationships that I, I developed there were, were great to be around. And it was, it was a good environment. It was a good place that I wound up. Where did you get that? You were young at that time. Where did this idea that you're going to just walk away from it? Was it all you or was family members? No, coaches? No, um, it, it was, it was family members of my, my family. It's really weird. Cause I, uh, I grew up in a family. My dad didn't wrestle. I mean, he wrestled for like a year when he was in like seventh grade. He doesn't know anything about the sport of wrestling. Um, my mom's one of the most shy people you'll ever meet. And she's not, um, she doesn't have a strong opinion with Daniel. You should be doing this. (laughs) She, uh, you know, within the sport of wrestling, she, she's very strong opinion on, um, you know, just do what, what makes you happy. And I know that sounds really, hippity dippity and all that but that's uh you know that's what any mom wants for her kid and uh so my my family wasn't a big influence for it it was um you know my body was beat up i uh i wasn't motivated i wasn't you know i would would go through uh i would go through the routines I i wouldn't i wouldn't go to practice trying to get better i would go to practice to go through the motions and to just uh you know, to punch the time card and it wasn't good for anybody. And I realized that. And, uh, you know, I knew the, the best thing to do for me and really the best thing to do for the people I was around was to, was to probably leave and, uh, you know, keep healthy relationships with, with, um, everyone who I had relationships with and, and, uh, keep in touch and just walk away from it with a a bunch of good friendships. And, and that was, is what made sense at the time. What did you learn about yourself other than being able to grow a, a fa- fabulous beard walking, <laughs> you know, away from Iowa? Um, a lot. Um, I think, I think when people are uncomfortable, I, I actually, this is going to, I'm, I'm probably going to screw it up. I, I, um, listened to one interview and it was like a rabbi or something of, uh, him talking about, uh, lobsters and how, the only time that they grow is when they get um, constrained by their old shell and uh, that stress causes them to grow because they shed their shell and then they go hide. And uh, but So what, it, what the main point is, is that when you're uncomfortable and under stress, um, you know, you learn about yourself and uh, you learn about not only yourself, but just you develop mentally, physically and, and emotionally, I think, are, uh, you know, are big things. And I think... You know, moving out of Iowa City and not really knowing um, where you're going to stumble upon next in the situation I was in, I'm not 100% certain knowing where you're going to be. There's there's some stress that goes along, or some anxiety that goes along with it, some uncomfort uncomfort that goes along with it. And I think uh, I think that that's where people learn how to uh, develop, and then and then figuring out how to be happy and and be just have fun when, uh, when you don't have, um, you know, a set future on, on what's going to happen. I think, uh, I think helped me a lot. I think helped me a lot. I think that oh, there's a people out there that I've talked to that are, they're jealous of you, not because of your accomplishment, just being able to walk away and live <laughs> like a gypsy and just, yeah. and just yeah. live and, and go out on walks like what you're doing in Colorado right now. Cause Ninety percent of us do get caught up in social media and the the lights and and not living a little bit. So hearing your story, I think a lot of people just have grabbed a hold of you because of you've been able to walk away from it. Did you miss 
wrestling? How long did it take for you to be like, I really need to be back in a room? That's it's that's a good question. I um I miss um competing, and, and it's weird saying that because I get I get really bad nerves, like uh, scared, scared to scared to wrestle, um, scared. But then uh, you know I, I deal I, I feel like I deal with it pretty well. I, I get I I get really scared, and um, but I, I feel like I deal with it well. And uh, I, I wasn't thinking of competing again. The um, going out to California, I was living with uh, one of my old teammates' family, um, his dad, and uh, I was living with him. And I forgot who brought it up, but they were like, "Hey, there's a competition in Pittsburgh. You should do it." Like, ah, I'm I'm not competing. I'm old and frail, and I can't train, and and um, and like, well it pays $2,500 and I'll pay for your flight to go out there. I'll sponsor your flight out there. And, and then another guy was like, I'll sponsor your hotel. I was like, well, you're telling me that you guys will pay me to go win 2,500 bucks. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and I was all, all excited over that. But that was, I mean, that, that's, to me, it wasn't like really a competition because it was, you know, I'm, I'm going to sound kind of, um, conceded right now but it was a it was a one of those developmental trying to get the sport of wrestling to become a professional league and those things never catch and they never do well mainly because our country won't allow it to because we're into football and basketball and all that stuff and wrestling just has a hard time competing with it but um it uh that was one of those things where i was like yeah i'll go wrestling now that'll be fun but it wasn't something where i was taken seriously as as coming back to compete obviously and then, um, and then going in, uh, and just wrestling with the guys on the team and the, the high school kids on the team. And then a couple other older guys, I, uh, I helped out at an MMA gym, um, just a little bit and just working with a handful of fighters when they had fights coming up to work specific areas. Um, and there's actually one fighter who was, um, well, I mean, there's a couple fighters who are studs there, but, uh, Joe Soto, he, uh, he wrestled at Iowa Central, and I, I think he was a national champ. He's a freak of nature, um, an amazing athlete. But I remember wrestling him the first time I went out to California and wrestling with him and uh, him choking me. And I remember thinking, and this was, I don't know how long into the workout, and uh, legally choking me. And I remember thinking, like, I'm going to get up and I'm going to I'm going to knock this guy out. And... Uh, Calm as could be. I'm I'm in a trying to get in on leg, and I remember thinking as he's choking me. I remember thinking, I'm gonna knock this guy out. And uh, finally, I got out of the front headlock, and I stood up and clinched my fist. And I was like, "That's a really bad idea to pick a fight with this guy. He's gonna beat my ass." <laughs> um, but it, it's it's uh, times like that, and it's instances like that where it's like the competitive nature is always gonna be in you, and uh, and then getting support from. Uh, from other other friends um, out in California, and and then just getting annoyed and um, pestered by guys in Iowa to come back and compete was when I really started thinking. I'm sorry, that was a really long answer for your question. No, that's um, perfect. I, I I started thinking, you know, maybe I, I, I'm feeling good. My body's feeling good. Um, maybe I can. Maybe I'll go wrestle again. Maybe I'll just just wrestle one tournament. Just throw. I mean. Tom always uh, talks about it's not throwing your hat in the ring. Um, Tom Brand's always he's he's like we're not here to throw our hat in the ring and just see how it turns out. Well, the first tournament that I entered, that's you know that was my game plan, and it uh, I know that's not right with uh, the Iowa mentality, but that that really was my game plan um, with the USA Open or the U.S. Open, and and it really was just kind of it was for fun. It was to see where where you line up in the pecking order and uh and then after that the uh the coaches and the way that they were talking um after that was very encouraging and very um you know motivating to maybe i just got a text to maybe make a uh to maybe make a run at it so i think that's when it really came into full circle on all right i think i'm gonna start competing again so the u.s open you 
obviously qualify for world team trials in Wisconsin. What mm-hmm. at that point you got to think, hey, I'm I'm in that peck. That's where I'm at in the pecking order. I have a shot. Did you think that? It was there anything in the back of your mind that you weren't ready? How did you get back into wrestling shape? Because this is it's a completely different thing of being in shape and being in wrestling shape in my mind. Yeah, sure. No, no, absolutely. I, I totally know what you're talking about. Um, I um, I had to learn how to train to my age, and I'm still learning. Um, you know, um. We're, we're all still learning in the sport. You know, every, everybody's still learning. Um, Cal Sanderson's still learning. John Smith, he's, you know, the best credentialed uh, USA wrestler. He's, yeah, I, I would be willing to bet he's still learning um, how to coach. Um, and uh, I had to learn, and I still am learning, how to um, train to my age. Uh, leaving Iowa City, I thought I could, I thought I could wrestle the way I, w- I, I, I thought I could train the way I could in college. And I can't do that. And I, I know that. And I, I'm starting to learn that I can, uh, you know, it's a lot of, it's a lot of, it's a, it's a decent amount of cardio. It's a decent amount of time spent on those machines and, and getting your um, wins back and getting your cardio back. But uh, the, the technique, you're not, I'm not going to lose the technique that I know. And I'm, I, it may dull a little bit if I don't, if I don't stay sharp with it. But I'm not going to lose it, and that's uh, it's coming from um, you know a lot, a lot of people. But one one person who said that to me specifically, Nate Ducharme, he was like, uh, he was talking about one of the fighters, an older fighter. He's like, I forget which fighter it was, but he said something along the lines that that guy doesn't he doesn't do anything other than just do cardio. He knows how to fight. He's never going to forget how to fight. All he does is just get his cardio up and get his get his wind and get his shape back together. And he does a lot of sparring. He doesn't do a lot of live sparring. Um, he doesn't need to, he knows how to fight. And, uh, and that's one of those things where I, and I do need to live wrestle and I do live wrestle, but I don't need to do it to the point that I used to do it in college. Um, I used to go through long, hard wrestling workouts, hard wrestling goes where it was, it was a grind and your body would get beat down, but you would recover quickly because you're young and, and, uh, that's just how it worked back then. And now I, it doesn't do that as much. So I have to I have to really be uh, disciplined on on how much I beat my body up because I'm not going to forget how to wrestle. Um, I need to stay sharp in my technique and all that, but I'm not going to forget how to wrestle. I just need to I need to be sar- smart in my training, and it's learning how to train for your for your age and not not get beat up and be stay injury free and and uh, stay healthy and feeling good for competition. So the world team trials came around. You really came out of nowhere. People were were so excited that you were in the finals. Came away with second place once again. For you, I gotta imagine a disappointment. You've never won that big title up to that point. What was your mind like after competing in that big event? Um, it was sad. I hate losing, and that was just another. You know, in high school, I took second in state twice. Um, finishing college was real bitter. Um, not even gonna say bittersweet; it was just bitter, and uh, and it, it's it was just another frustrating um, thing that you felt. I mean, Humphrey's a good wrestler. You know, he's a he's a freak athlete, and good for him. Um, but lo- losing sucks, and you know, it, it was matches that first match he he tacked me, and you know, got caught up and. And he capitalized on it. And the second match, I felt like I was in. And you know, I don't want to say I got robbed or anything. I never would say that. But it was a match that I felt like I was in control of. And uh, and not having and having it not go your way was it sucks. It's it's really disappointing and it's it's frustrating, you know. And it it was just another one of those things. And I wasn't planning on wrestling in the Olympics or uh, the Olympic year. I uh, and then after really after that I, I wasn't certain I was going to go down to 57 and it was, uh, I mean, Royce even said something. Um, he was like, Dennis, t- take the year off a world, a world gold is the same as the Olympics. Cause, uh, my weight wasn't going to be in the Olympics and he thought that I wasn't going to be wrestling. And, and I really wasn't certain I was anyways. And, uh, and then once I kind of, 
you know, thought it through and like, I'm not, a, I'm not, I wasn't a big 61 kilo guy. Um, I, I was probably a little undersized. I don't think under, underpowered, but a little undersized. And, uh, and I was like, you know what, screw it. Let's, uh, let's make the cut and let's really give this the last, you know, the last hurrah, whatever. Yeah. But, um, really just kind of, you know, put everything towards it. And, uh, and that's what we decided to do. I got to imagine that's, that's gotta be difficult getting second place. I, I have at the state le- high school level and, you know, you, you did that twice in high school and then college and then world team. And they always say, well, you know, he's going to use that as motivation for the next time. But I got to imagine that that's tough to do after you get second so many times to keep having that mindset. Who pushed you to go towards, was it you or was there a specific coach that said, you got to dig deep and you got to try to make 57 kilograms Olympic team? Yeah, n- none of the coaches, the coaches have been very, very, very good with me. I think they treat me a little bit differently than, um, than, than probably most of the other guys, probably all the other guys there, especially the college guys. And, you know, I think, probably differently than um all the all the hawkeye club guys uh they, they're very supportive but not very pushy and uh and, and and they will be if i'm doing something wrong if i'm doing something uh you know unbecoming if i'm doing something that's detrimental they'll they'll slap me and they'll be like hey you gotta stop dicking around you gotta stop doing whatever that may be um and and if it's something that's detrimental, they'll they'll say something. But pretty much everything else, they're well. What are you thinking? What are you thinking about this? What are you thinking about going there? Um, they're they're never. Hey, you need to be doing this. Um, they're always very very supportive, and I, I think they. I don't want to say they're walking on eggshells because I don't think they are, but I think they just know that. Um, to me, and now I'm going to sound like a little baby. If I if I don't want, if I'm not motivated or want to do something, it's probably not. I'm probably not going to do it with, you know, my full heart and uh, with my full um, motivation. And I think that they know that, and uh, they they do a great job on um, not letting me call the shots, but. Um, it's being, it's very, it's very, um, it, it goes both ways where they're very, Hey, what are you thinking? Well, that's good because we were thinking something similar and then, and then finding middle ground in there or, you know, most of the time where we were pretty much on the same, you know, on the same page with that. So it's good. They're, they're, they're super supportive. And when I, when I told them I was, I was going to make the cut to 57, they were nothing but all right, let's do it. And with my diet, um, you know, I'm, I'm smart. I'm pretty smart with, uh, things I care about, things I care about. I'm, I'm, I do my research and I'm pretty educated with it. And, um, the nutrition was, you know, I would ask Terry a couple of things about nutrition. I would talk with Tom a little bit, talk with our trainer. Our trainer is our, we have the best trainer in, um, not college wrestling in the sport of wrestling in the world. And I would ask him a couple of things and he, uh, he's a nutritionist. He is, uh, he's everything. He, uh, he's amazing. And I would talk with him a little bit and, uh, just the staff and the support we have there, the resources we have at Iowa are, they cannot be beat. When you decided to go down to 57, Matt McDonough is there, Tony Ramos is there, your own teammates. Did you think that there was anywhere else that you should be training? Did you know that that's the room you needed to be in? Um, I said this before, um, leaving Iowa City, they were like, some people, before I left Iowa City, they were like, are you going to keep, are you going to keep training? Where are you going to train at? And to me, it was, it was very, if I'm going to train, I'm going to train at Iowa City. If I'm going to train, there's, there really, and this was, I'm saying this from when I was much younger. Um, if I'm going to keep training, I'm going to train at Iowa City. And then uh, coming back to the sport, I have, I have a great relationship with Mike Zadig. There's, um, I don't know how much talk has been out. Ramos kind of um, went out of his way to point it out. Um, 
I was looking at going to Virginia Tech and uh, going out there. They got a great thing going, and they've done they they did great this this last year. And I, I went out there, um, checked it out, wrestled with a couple of the guys, and uh, I, I was really I was I was looking at that. I, I really was looking at going out there and uh, and coming back. The, the 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 coaching is important to me. That that, that is important. Um, and Mike Zadek is a great coach, and I will say that until I'm blue in the face. Um, and he's a great coach for me, and he was when I was in college, and he still would be right now. Um, the training partners at Iowa are, are I, I think, are better, a better fit for me. And more importantly than that, it was uh, going to Virginia Tech and then coming back and uh, seeing guys like Thomas Gilman and Corey Clark and, uh, you know, Brandon Sorensen. These are guys that I'm all pretty close with. And uh, and there and there's many more to list. I mean, guys that you haven't heard of that are on the team. Um, Perez is another kid, and there's there's a whole bunch of them. And uh, they are they're they're, fr- they're friends and and they're family. And and I'm gonna take a couple words. And I don't know how much trouble this is gonna start. Um, Mike Zadek said it himself. He said, you know, I'm not even that upset about leaving Iowa when he, when he left Iowa. He's like. You know, I'm not even that upset um, to not with with Tom. The biggest thing for me is I'm upset because I wasn't able to work with the kids that I had that relationship with, and uh, and really, guys, kids like that are had the biggest influence on on me coming back. And and Gilman, I mean, he's he's a kid that I hang out with on a regular basis, and people got him all wrong, and he's evil and mean, and he's a little shit and all this and that, but he's He's a hardworking kid who loves the sport and wants to win, and he he doesn't really care what people think, and uh, you know, and that's and that's what makes him so uh, so hated probably by a lot of people by a lot of college wrestling, and that's what makes him loved by all the people who do love him. But um, there are people like that. Corey Clark is one of the goofiest kids that you'll ever meet, and he's a kid that. You know, whenever you're around him, you just can't help but look at him and, <laughs> and just stare and laugh and and have a great time. And, and that's why, and that really was one of the, that was the biggest deciding factor on on where I where I stayed. And I well, I gotta imagine there's lots of things in what you just said that caught my caught my ears. You know, you didn't probably want to compete with Zadek's beard. Um, no, yeah, that's, that's pretty fierce. That, <laughs> I, don't, I don't believe he still has that damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's uh it's out of control but it's amazing at the same time and the other thing is thomas gilman you guys some of i feel like your characteristics are coming out of him you know kind of like a country outlaw They're that old like the you know the Waylon jennings just that he he, oh, loves, he, loves he, he comes out to the that crazy music people are like you know what is this music and people that are that know you know outlaw country yeah. love it you know they love it and uh, there's definitely I can that makes sense that you you guys hang out a lot and you guys kind of have that same personality of you know yeah, I'm not gonna take shit off nobody. You yeah, know? it's so, funny because his roommate uh, Brooks Sam Brooks is the same thing. Um, but Gilman's all you know Gilman's not not always flexing all the time, but he's kind of a little bit always on edge a little bit walking down the sidewalk or someone's walking in the crosswalk and. They shouldn't be walking. Gilman's gonna, you know, he's gonna be like, "What? What the hell's that person?" You know, he's gonna snap a little bit, <laughs> and then Brooks will be that person in the crosswalk, just kind of walking, strolling in the middle of, you know, on a Sunday afternoon, and not really knowing what's going on. So the combination between those two are absolutely hysterical. Um, but it, it's, yeah, it's 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 a unique environment here, and it's you got all all types of personalities, and it makes it fun to be around. So you're in the Iowa room. They've they've got you ready for the Olympic team trials. Going into it, emotions, nervousness. Were you excited? Uh, you, you said that you're an anxious person. What was your thoughts the day you know after you, know, you weigh in? What what's your immediate thoughts going through your head? Weighing in, I uh, once it gets real close to competition, like once you're at nut cut time, it's uh, it's 
I, I, cause I do. And I let my mind stray a little bit and I have to really consciously work hard on, you know, wait, I made weight. So this is what's going through my mind. I'll just, I made weight. Um, all right, I got to get food. And then it's like, we're here, we're here in, in my mind. I'm just thinking out loud right now. I'm like, we're here, we're here. I can win this. And then I get, I get really excited and really overwhelmed and then I get really scared and then I have to go back to my first match is Alan Waters. That's it. Well, it's actually uh, the winner of Waters or uh, or that uh, Eric Ken, um He's a Uzbekistan guy for out out um, from out in uh, Utah, I think. Um, and he, and he's good. And I've watched a lot of his matches. And I actually thought I was going to have him. And uh, and Waters ended up beating him. But I knew that I had the winner of those two, so I'm, I'm the only thing I'm doing is watching a little bit of video, but not dwelling on it, and just really trying to stay calm and know that I have the winner of those two, and that's it. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that Tony Ramos and Coleman Scott and all those other guys are on the other side. It doesn't matter that I'll have Graf if I win my first match, or most likely Graf if I win my first match. Um, none of that matters because then that's when I start getting overwhelmed and that's when I start really getting bad, um, bad nerves. So I, I, I have to do a really, um, I have to make a very conscious effort on just focusing on the next task at hand. And that, that's when, that's when I, I can calm down and that's when I can relax and take it for what it is. So watching the matches actually makes you more anxious. You don't, you know, study film. Does that does that make your mind go? Um, I, I I'll, I'll watch it and I'll see. You know the the um the Eric guy. He he. I I knew he was a big upper body guy. Didn't you know? I'm not again. I'm not talking bad about him. Didn't go to the legs that much, but strong. He looked like a. I mean, he looked like a damn bull. He uh, real strong. Looked real. Um, Good upper body look like I it, so I knew where I wanted to go and then I didn't I, I so I knew that I don't need to watch it anymore, I don't need to dwell on it I don't need to overanalyze it because really the only thing that matters to me is if I go out and wrestle well and feel well and wrestle with with uh, my hands and feet moving and wrestle with quickness and wrestle where where I'm good good and with angles then <laughs> then it doesn't matter who. Uh, who I'm wrestling. So then, so I'll, I'll watch him, see, see where they're good. And then I'll know that. And then I don't need to know any more about it. I know where they're good. I, I mean, continually studying them doesn't, that, that's doing a little overkill. And, and so I go from, in my mind, I go from knowing where he's good, where he wants to be, and then knowing where I'm good and where I want to be. And then that's all I focus on. And that's, that's what keeps it simple for me. So let's fast forward to the finals, Tony Ramos. That's somebody that you know a lot of. You don't need to watch film of. Yeah, and that and that's what I, one time I, uh, I I I was watching him. I was watching a match, uh, one of his matches, and I was like, I mean, we we know each other. I, I'm an idiot if I think that he uh, he's not scouting me, or it, even if he is scouting me, it doesn't matter because we've wrestled with each other so long. We know each other, and. Um, you know, it was, it was something where it was like, I didn't watch any of his videos. I started watching one match, and I was like, I know this. Um, I'm not an idiot. I mean, it, I don't need to watch any of his stuff. I, I know where he, I know where he's good, and he's good in a lot of areas. Um, and and I didn't, I didn't really need to watch it. So, so you took him, took two straight matches. Sec, last one that uh, ultimately made you an Olympian. That gut wrench is. Uh, Something that I haven't seen from a freestyle wrestler for a while. That I mean, you said you wanted to break his ribs. <laughs> his, yeah. it, it almost like he wasn't expecting this gut wrench from you, but this is what you're what you're known for. And he, know, he knows I have a gut wrench, and and uh, it, that actually my my high school coach, um, my high school coach is that's where. Oh shoot, he's still there. Yep. Uh, yeah, my high school coaches was when I, uh, when kind of a light bulb uh, clicked, and uh, and they were like, "You lock up a gut, you break their, 
ribs. You break the ribs. And uh, it's like, okay. He's like, don't, <laughs> don't switch directions. Cause it would, I, I used to try to gut one way and I'd get met with little resistance. So I jumped the other side and try to catch a guy off guard. They're like, why do you, why do you, you're not going to catch anyone off guard. Get that damn gut locked up and break his ribs and just keep running, keep driving your feet. And uh, Coach Wall, I remember one of my coaches said that, and uh, and I was in a mat, I was at a developmental tournament wrestling a pretty good kid. I forget that kid's name. And uh, and he he was taking pictures, and there's a picture of uh, of me running the gut wrench, and it was a picture of both of our faces. And I was tr- I was legitimately I had a gut wrench locked up, and the only thing I was thinking was just can keep driving, just keep driving. He's gonna go eventually. And, uh, and the look on that guy's face looked like he, he got his ribs broke. And, uh, and that's where it kind of started, where I started realizing that I can, you know, I can turn people with, uh, with a gut wrench. When I won university nationals, I went, um, that was when it was different periods. It was, you had to win best two out of three and, uh, five matches. I think I went three full periods. So 10 matches, I, I went three full periods. Every other time when I'd get on top, I got everyone as hard as I could and, um, you know, it, it's, I have a good gut wrench and uh, <laughs> I just got to continue to get it better to turn all these foreigners now. Did you know if you took Tony down that you'd be able to get him? Yeah. Um, and Tony's, and I didn't know that where it's like the match is going to be over, but I, I'm comfortable if I get on top and get a gut wrench locked up <clears throat> Um, that I'm gonna turn people, and uh, you know I'm not I'm not taking anything away from Tony. Tony's, and he's good on bottom. He made adjustments with Clone when uh, when Clone turned him, and uh, that's, <laughs> that's an area that he's worked, and it's an area where I knew um, I knew it was gonna it wasn't gonna be a, a, a given, but I knew I know what I'm capable of, and I, I know what I have uh, what I have confidence in and I, I had confidence <clears throat> that if I get on top and get a gut wrench locked up that that I can I can I can do damage and that's you know that was my only focus of just give me my lock that was all that was all I wanted well there was a couple extra just for good measure and yeah. walking off the off the mat and getting the microphone stuck in your mouth you you've had so many times where you've j- you finished second and this was the the first tournament for a long time for you that you could put a smile on your face and your hand was raised. Can you? Is there some? Is there words that can describe that feeling? Seeing the Iowa Hawkeyes being able to see you do that. It, it's not really the Hawkeyes that I really care about. Like it's not the it's not the thousands of you know Hawkeye fans in there that I really cared about as much as a probably two dozen people that were there that I would consider, you know, my best friends in, in the, in the world. And I had, uh, I had four, four, um, high school buddies, four or five high school buddies who, uh, who drove out and, you know, them coming was, was awesome. And I got to see them after. And then I had uh, a family that I coached, a family that, uh, that I coached at, I coached two of the kids in California and they flew out. I mean, they flew out from California, you know, it, uh, it was, uh, it was, a it was, a all, well, they actually ended up, didn't buy a ticket for one of the kids. They got to the airport and, uh, one of the kids didn't have a ticket huh. and, uh, he, I think he, he's gonna dislike his parents for a little bit. I think he's yeah. a little with his dad. Um, but it, it was, it was people like that, that came out, um, the old high school coach, um, well, both of them, um, came out and, uh, it, it was people like that, that came out. My, my mom and my brother and my brother's girlfriend and you know, my girlfriend came and her, uh, her parents came and it was, uh, it was those people that, that came where it was like, those were the people that really, you know, that I was, you know, I just, I just wanted to get them all together right then, you know, um, I wasn't able to. Uh, Allison Schwab, some, you know, I haven't talked to her in a while and then, uh, you know, got to see her and it was, 
you know, just people like that, that you have such a close relationship for. That was, that was really the people that I was, that I was happy, um, that I was happy that came. And that, those were the only people on my mind at the time. And I didn't know John Smith was actually doing the interview. Kind of feel like an idiot right now. Um, <laughs> I didn't know John Smith was, uh, was doing the interview. I couldn't hardly hear through the headphones. It was, it was kind of static here, not very loud and kind of feel like an idiot not knowing it was him. Well, uh, that should have a better answer for him. That's a lots of emotions going through your head. I'm sure at that time. And a lot of the media right now is talking about what Tony said after have you, you know, you, this is, this is the highlight of your career. And this happens shortly after. Have you, have you talked to Tony? Have you listened to this? Does it matter I to you? Listen to it. I haven't talked. Uh, I haven't talked to him. Um, I mean, there, there, at, at first there was there was anger. Um, actually, there wasn't really anger. I don't know if there was ever really anger. I, you know, he feels the way he feels. Um, that's. I, I wish he didn't feel that way. Um, I don't feel that way. I wish he didn't, but I understand um, that he feels that way. And I, you know, he, he's got to be himself, and, and he is. And he, uh, you know, and he's owning it. He, uh, he's not backing down from what he said. He feels that strongly about it. And, you know, I, I wish he didn't. I wish that I could change that, but, but I can't. He's a, he's a man. I, I, I think he should have dealt with it differently. Um, but, you know, in the end, he dealt with it the way he felt like he had to. And, um, you know, that's what happened. I, I don't agree with it, but I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna talk shit about him. Um, I, I wish, I wish it didn't go down that way. And I wish we didn't have those feelings and he's going to be successful wherever he goes. And he's going to do well. He's tough. He's a tough wrestler. Um, and whether he gets into coaching, whether he continues to compete, he's, uh, he's going to do well at, at whatever he does. He's got, he's, uh, you know, despite disagreeing with what he said, he's got a good head on his shoulders and he's going to, he'll, he'll do all right. Yeah. Uh, he, uh, he shared this GoFundMe page for your family to get to Rio. Yeah. Some, someone told me that I thought that was cool. And, yeah. and, and that's where I get, you know, that's where I get brought back to being, um, you know, emotional for him too. He was emotional right after the match. And I don't think that, uh, you know, I don't think it was the best time to interview him, but me and I, I heard that he did an interview on uh, the day after and he, he stuck by with what he said. So maybe he does feel that way. And he wouldn't have changed what he said, even if he, uh, had an hour or two or whatever to calm down, um, he probably would have said the same thing. So um, it's good that he's owning it, and it's. Um, I, I wish I wish it wouldn't uh, happen that way, but you know I, I can't I can't control anybody else or their feelings towards me. So, um, so I'm not I'm not too worried about it. I, uh, you know, he, I hope the best for him, but. Yeah, it's, it's it's your show now. You're uh, you know you're going to Rio, and uh, with the uh, that GoFundMe page that we you know we I mentioned, this thing just took off, Dan. I don't know if you've checked it, but it's over eighteen thousand dollars now to get your family over to Rio. It, that is that's amazing. It's amazing that the wrestling community and people maybe outside of the wrestling community can can do this for your family. You, you talk about all these people flying in, driving in, and how important, you know, you, you've, you were out, out west. You didn't really have a whole, you didn't have family. You were by yourself. What's it like knowing that they're going to be there by your side in Rio? It's awesome. I'm, uh, I'm really ecstatic about it. It's, uh, it's a, it, it's, it's pretty cool. I, uh, I was, I, my brother and I talked, my brother and I were pretty similar with, uh, with, just we're pretty similar and uh i was like i don't know about that i don't really my because my sister tried getting a hold of me about setting it up before doing it and I was like i don't i don't know and i didn't really get back to her and then she posted it and i i don't like begging for money and i don't like um you know we can figure out how to get there and we can 
you know, well, shit, I'll take out a loan if I have to, to <laughs> pay it off. Um, you know, um, I, I don't like begging for money. And, uh, and the, I asked a couple of people about it and they're like, no, you have to, that's not, you have to. And I was, I put my mind at ease a little bit and then to see how it just, I mean, went, it, it, it's unbelievable to me how, uh, how fast and how, I mean, my, I, I heard it was a $20,000 goal and I was like, there is no way in hell that that is going to happen. <laughs> and then uh, I looked on later that day and it was at like eight grand in a couple of hours or within a half a day. And I was like, holy no way. And, uh, it was just in disbelief and, and the support has been, has been amazing. It's, it's going to go to my, uh, to, you know, my, uh, my brother, my sister, um, their boyfriends and girlfriends and my mom. And then, uh, hopefully a couple of friends. Uh, I don't think that it'll, it'll cover all of them, but, uh, hopefully it'll cover those four and my, and my girlfriend, hopefully it'll cover those five. And then, uh, and then if there's anything left, there's a couple of friends that I'm trying to, uh, help out my, uh, my buddy who I'm staying with right now. Hopefully I can, uh, Mark, hopefully I can, um, help him if, if there's any money left over. So that's, that's kind of what, uh, what that's going towards. And it, it's, it's, it's pretty cool seeing that and how, how the response has been with it too. Well, if you'd like to help them out, check out, go look, uh, the Dennis family to Rio on the GoFundMe. It's all over social media. You can probably just search Dan Dennis and it'll be somewhere. It's all over my social media, but, uh, let's, uh, let's help them go above and beyond that 20 K and get the family there. Wrestling fans is this is a, this is a great story. Uh, and this is why I think people are, they are resonating with you just being able to go out come back from wrestling, get back in wrestling shape, which is a story in itself, just to be back in shape and uh, on your way to Rio. One last question. What do you think you need to do with your wrestling game to, to get ready for international competition? We're, I mean, almost a hundred, over a little over a hundred days out. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's the only thing on my mind right now. I mean, it's, I'm done celebrating and, I'm wrapping my head around what happened last weekend. And my only focus is, uh, is to, to do the same thing in Rio. That's really the only place my mind is at right now. And, uh, it, it really is just to continue to develop on, uh, on a couple of areas where I got, where I uh, didn't do great in, uh, in Krasniarks and, uh, just to keep staying sharp and to keep motivated and to keep feeling good with my body. And, uh, you know, I got I got the right coaches. Mike Duro is uh, is huge on that. I just got off the phone with him, and we were just talking a couple of game plans a little bit, and uh, a lot of that is staying um, at ease with your mind and uh, with your body, and staying feeling good, and then just look, a couple key areas to to develop and improve on where I can take advantage. Of these, you know, these uh, these international guys. Well, Dan Dennis, thank you for your time today. Get you uh, enjoying the weather out in Colorado and your, your trek up the mountain. Give him a follow. Daniel Dennis USA just got on Twitter. I mean, you've got less tweets than Terry Brands, I think. And, uh, but you got 1,200 followers. I got to imagine there'll be more coming your way. Cool. Thank you. Uh, thanks for your time, Dan. Yep, no problem.